wait, wait, wait. First of all, subscribe and activate the subtitles in your language. And secondly, we all know that One Punch Man is a party of the hero genre, something like Karate. The premise of One Punch Man is simple, Saitama is the strongest. So I am going to analyze the real power of Saitama. Get ready for the explanation of Goku vs Saitama. Let's be direct, both Goku and Saitama will be the winners in their respective universes. If a version of Goku appeared in the Saitama universe, then most likely Saitama will be the winner. On the other hand, the Dragon Ball universe is much more realistic and complex, where Goku himself would not even be in the top 10 of the most powerful characters. So we will take Saitama to the world of Dragon Ball, where we can calculate his powers and get an idea of how strong he is. This is the new set warrior. Codename Saitama, better known as the Ball Man in a Cape and his skills are very impressive. Extreme physical strength. His punch are so powerful that just one is enough to blow up his rifles into a thousand pieces. However, Saitama isn't a martial artist, so he haven't special techniques. He can't field ki, much less fly, but he makes up for this with powerful jumps. His greatest feat was jumping from the moon to earth in seconds. He also has incredible speed and reflexes, exceeding the speed of sound with ease. Thanks to this, Saitama can easily dodge or stop attacks, as if that weren't enough, he has a practically absolute defense, which unlike set warriors isn't based on key, his body is indestructible. I don't know about you, but I never saw a single scratch on him. Finally, he has enormous energy reserves being able to perform incredible movements and devastating attacks without getting tired. Saitama does need to sleep, and we also saw him get fatigued a couple of times. It may have a large amount of energy, but it isn't infinite. With all this, we can clearly say that Saitama could easily be part of the set warriors. And this is when we come to the million dollar question. What is the maximum power of Saitama? We cannot say much about his defense and speed. He withstood an explosion of fire and extreme gravity without disheveling it. On the other hand, his strike for we have more information. At the climax of his time battle against Boros, he launched an attack that could destroy the Earth. And facing with a threat, Saitama counterattacked with a punch that managed to neutralize the energy blast and crush his opponent. Only this time we could see Saitama launch it an attack with his true strength. And visit on this, we can approximate the real power of Saitama. So how much power does it take to destroy a planet? Well, this depends on the side of the planet. For example, Piccolo destroyed the moon when it didn't reach 1000 units force but it isn't the same to destroy a small satellite like the moon than to destroy the planet Earth or a giant planet like the planet Namek. So we can say that in Dragon Ball there are three types of the planetary destruction. The first is to destabilize the core, for that is enough to launch an attack that directly impacts the core of the planet. This will start with a chain of reaction and will end with the explosion of the core itself and destroy the planet. An example is when Freezer launched his attack against Namek. The energy wasn't powerful enough to destroy the planet, but it started the chain reaction that ended up making it explode. The second type of planetary destruction is massive destruction. In this case, the core will not be affected, but the attack alone is enough to destroy the planet. The best example would be when Cell, after being defeated, inflated like a balloon to cause an explosion so powerful that it will destroy the planet instantly. Finally, we have planetary destruction by disintegration. In this case, the planet is victim of a large amount of energy, so powerful that it simply disintegrates. So which of these forms of planetary destruction could Lord Boros perform? 
At first glance, I could say the first, but let's make things interesting. Suppose that when he launched his attack, he meant that he would destroy the Earth with massive destruction. The power required for this must be similar to Cell in its second form, at the legendary rank, so at the best portals, she would be as powerful as a Super Saiyan. Now, for Saitama to be able to stop that attack with a one hit, he will have to be one rank above in the anomaly range. So we conclude that Saitama's base power when fighting seriously will be in this range, a power close to Gohan Super Saiyan 2. It is said that warriors of anomaly rank should not stick because they are creatures that cannot be born by natural means. And so we finally begin the most awaiting moment, the battle between these two colossi. As usual, Goku could start the fight in his base form. He could immediately know Saitama's power. But Saitama can know the power of Goku. He doesn't have the ability to feel ki. Being a kind person, this hero could start with his basic attacks. The normal consecutive punches. It's a series of quick punches with the right hand. These attacks are more than enough to crush most monsters, but they wouldn't do anything to Goku, that in his base state would just dodge them. Seeing this, Saitama would use his second attack, the consecutive normal punches with two hands, a flurry of much faster attacks. This time Goku might not be able to dodge them all, he would decide to transform into Super Saiyan maximum power. In front of an enemy superior to Lord Boros, Saitama will be forced to fight seriously, using the serious series. That as, we know they are techniques in which he makes an effort. Saitama will use the serious side hops, with which he moves extremely fast, creating a multitude of images of himself. This move will surprise Goku for his speed. Goku will be forced to transform into Super Saiyan 2 to match his speed. Faced with an opponent who matches his speed and is immune to his normal attacks, Saitama could use his serious punch, the impressive attacks he used to destroy Boros. As we said, this destructive power could be like a full force attack from Gohan Super Saiyan 2. This powerful attack could manage to wound Goku, but without actually killing him. Then Saitama could realize that he is meeting a formidable rival someone at the same level. I think this will cheer up Saitama and regain his desire to fight, starting an impressive peer-to-peer -peer battle. Finally, Goku could transform into Phase 3, forcing Saitama to reach his limit. If it had to guess, I would say that by trying his best he is capable of reaching the next rank of primordial strength. And you might ask yourself, are you telling me that Saitama, a simple human, being could reach the power of primordial force in the universe? You are right. Perhaps I exaggerated a bit, because this power is enough to endanger the entire universe. In this colossal battle, they could both land devastating blows and hurt each other. But in the end, who will win? Well, Although Saitama's strength is colossal, he doesn't use martial arts, he haven't special techniques, he can't feel the presence of his opponent. I think that this could be Saitama's Achilles heel. As an experienced martial artist, Goku could read his movements and ultimately defeating him with a special technique like Kamehameha. So today Goku has proven to be more powerful than Saitama. Yet what we say about Saitama is what we have seen to date. Saitama, without controlling the energy, has a power close to perfect cell. Can you imagine how powerful it would be if he did train at the level of Goku? If you like it, this video, subscribe and give me a like. See you soon in more power levels videos. Bye bye.